Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity. Um, I'm just popping up on here real quick to do an impromptu video that I did not at all have planned. But I'm going to be ranking all of the Predator and Alien films. So push, put them all together. I'm not doing them separately. Just smushing, you know, because these two franchises are connected. Even not just the Alien vs. Predator films. It's just it always had a similar sort of feel. And I've recently watched Aliens and Prey and Predator. And I just watched a really long review on Predator 2 last night, and I was watching a lot of videos on the Alien franchise, and so that just really got me in the mood <laughs> to, like, why don't I just rank all of them together? Now, as always, this will just be my humble opinion. I'm not going to go off of popular opinion box office returns or anything like that. Therefore, my humble opinion is... As per usual, if you know my channel, is going to be very different <laughs> than uh, most of the popular opinion. And I have do make some controversial choices here that I know not everyone's going to agree with. But I am true to myself. I am true to my opinion. And I'm not going to lie or sugarcoat it to try to fit in with popular opinion. Alright, so I have... Uh, there are 13 films in total that I will be ranking. Um, hold on, I have this list here. Oh no, I don't have the list. But you know them all, all the Alien and Predator films. Um, so I, I divided them into three different categories in my countdown. The bad, the good, the awesome. Because I'm ranking all 13, so that will give you a better sort of um, feeling of just how much I like or dislike uh, the movie I'm talking about. Alright, cool. So, um, let's go ahead and get started. And we'll start with The Bad, of course. My number 13 and thus least favorite Alien and Predator film. And that is Aliens vs. Predator Requiem. Now, I want to start out by being completely honest. I have not seen this film. And I never will. And uh, <laughs> that's the thing. Like, you might call it disingenuous to include a film I haven't seen. You might say, oh, well, you should have just left it off your list. But here's the thing. I don't need to see it to know how much it sucks. As you'll find out shortly, I was not a fan of the first Alien vs. Predator film. I really disliked it. And when they had, so when they had the sequel, I had no interest in, in seeing that. But from what I hear from everybody who's seen it, is that it's like ten times worse than the first Alien vs. Predator film. So why would I subject myself to a film that's ten times worse than a film I really didn't like? <laughs> and plus, from what I've hear, heard about it, I've heard some plot summons about it, I've heard, seen some images and some trailers, and everything I've seen would confirm what everyone's telling me, that this film is a giant piece of shit. So I do like you guys, and I like me coming on here and making lists like this, but not enough to subject myself to a giant piece of one of the worst films I would have ever seen. I'm not going to do that for you. I'm not going to do that for this video. I don't care if you think it's legit for me to include a movie I haven't seen. I am not going to subject myself to it just so I can say, oh, I've seen it. Not going to happen, ever. I'm never going to watch that film. Anyway, <laughs> so... As I alluded to earlier, we'll get to my number 12, which is Alien vs. Predator. Now, I know some people might disagree with me having this film so low. I know there were some people who thought it was okay. I don't think there's anyone who would put it at the top of this list or even near the top. But there's many people I've heard who would be like, oh, that's okay. That was alright. It was a fun watch. And I suppose I was... So I was a huge fan of this concept. I was really, really looking forward to it for most of my adult life. And so when they finally did it, I was like, yes! I was so excited. Um, and I had read uh, the books. They had several books that were, I believe, adaptations of the comic books. Uh, that came out on paperback, but I read it in, you know book form rather than comic book form but I believe they were adaptations of the comic books of Alien vs. Predator and I thought they were amazing, especially the first book which I absolutely loved and so 
you know, I was hoping beyond hope that they would adapt that story, which is very jolly well what they fucking should have done. But I would have been okay with them not doing it. I, and I kind of expected them not to, to be honest. Like, I didn't watch any trailers or anything before I saw it. I just heard the concept. But I was like, no, nah, they're probably not going to adapt it. And so when, first of all, <clears throat> I would have been perfectly okay with them not adapting it. And I remember after I saw it complaining about how much better the book was than the movie and someone was like well are they obligated to follow the book and I said no they're not but the book is an example of how you could do this story awesome and why would you disregard that example and do something that's a total piece of shit now they did take some cues from the book such as having the human protagonist team up with the predator at the end but in a much worse way that was not earned like it was in the book um and first mistake of this film was to set it on earth in present day they absolutely should have set it in the alien setting of the future, and that was a huge mistake. I would have been okay with them doing a totally original story, had nothing to do with the books, as long as they set it in the alien timeline in the future. It was the biggest, so that was their first mistake, but it wasn't the only one. <laughs> like, the whole film was just, didn't have the, the gravitas or the scariness or the eeriness that I've come to expect from both of these franchises. It was too over the top. It was too silly. It was too like a uh, trying to be like a typical slasher horror film. And it was PG-13. And so, um, yeah, I hated this film. I don't care what anyone else says. I, I think it, because it was such a, I have a special hatred in my heart for this film because this was such a good concept that they fucking ruined. And I fear that they'll never touch this concept again because it's been tainted by these two films. Anyway. Next, we'll get to my number 11, which is The Predator. And this was another huge disappointment because I, I was really looking forward to this film. I heard that Shane Black, who directed some good films, he wrote some good films, he was in the first Predator, he was writing and directing this film. I was like, wow, this, and he's assuring everyone this is going to be a great film, you're going to love it. And, uh... It was not. <laughs> it was a modern day CGI fest bullshit action story uh, that the, where the plot didn't add up. It re the plot reminded me a lot of like say a Michael Bay Transformers film or something like that. It was just nonsensical. None of the characters really came off very well. Um, I mean, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. It was, you know, somewhat entertaining to watch, but it's a film that I never, ever, ever am ever going to watch again. Ever. <laughs> anyway, we'll get into my number 10 which is Alien Resurrection. Now, this was close between Alien Resurrection and The Predator, but what pushed Alien Resurrection over the top for me was it, at least it had um, Sigourney Weaver and um, Winoa Ryder in it. I was like, okay, that's a benefit, and I like their characters, and I like their chemistry. But other than that, this is another over-the-top, silly, ridiculous film where uh, they have the a Ripley has sex with an alien, and she's a clone from the and they're in the future. And I feel so disconnected from all the alien, other alien films, and it does all these ridiculous, over-the-top things, and it just comes off as silly, and it doesn't again doesn't have the gravitas and the scariness that this franchise should do. So. That is my number 10, so next we will get to my number 9, still in the bad category, I will remind you, and that is Alien 3. Now, I think I am probably harder on this film than a lot of people are. I've heard some other people saying, oh, it's not as bad as everyone says it is, but it, it is. And here's the thing, they kill Newt and Hicks off before the film even starts, like in the opening credits, and the film starts with them dead. That was a that tanked the film, and I know like I didn't know this like when it first came out. I wasn't a, I didn't really I did watch this in the theaters if I'm remembering correctly. I was like 12 years old or something, um, 
but I wasn't like a huge... I don't think I've even seen Aliens before I saw this. So I wasn't aware of how terrible that was and what they're doing. But even back then, I was like, this is, you know... And it kind of turned me off the Alien franchise, honestly. Like, if someone had to insist, no, you need to see Aliens. Um, well, I do... I had vague memories of it from when it first came out in the 80s. But, um, I, you know... And I was like, all right, I'll watch it. But then I was like, well, no, you're right. <laughs> it's like a billion times better than Alien 3. Um, but, um... Yeah, but the killing off Hicks and, um... Newt in between films tank the film. There's no way around it because there was a lot of fans who, when they heard about this film, heard that they were doing that before the film even came out, they were already no fuck this film, and people were like, "Oh, you're judging it unfairly." And typically, I agree. You shouldn't judge a film before it comes out uh, just based off of one information. Like a lot of people thought Star Trek Two would suck because they heard Spock was gonna die, but that was actually an amazing sequence. So I agree with that typically, but in this case, they were actually right. There's no way you could this film could have possibly been good when they kill Hicks and. Um, Newt off, off screen before the film even starts. And the thing is, is that the actor, Michael Bean, was really looking forward to returning. He was like desperately wanting to return. And when he heard that he was being written out, he was so bummed. He was so pissed off because there were some early drafts of the film that had him in it. Um, and the thing is, is that that is a symptom of the overall problem with this film because this film has one of the most interesting and clearest cases of studio interference. This was basically, film was made by committee. It was made by a studio and the studio completely sucked away all creativity from this film and they tried to hire some creative script writers but they, they weren't working and they were interfering and David Fincher who would go on to be one of the best directors in Hollywood um, was just a hired gun here because this is his first film so he was a novice so they figured they could just boss him around and tell him what to do and he had very little creative pretty much no creative control over the story. He had creative control over like the shots and the acting and stuff like that, but not over the story and they even locked him out of the edit. Uh, <laughs> and so this yeah, and so what resulted was a boring rehash of the first alien film. There's there's no if there's no way around it. And they had been giving such an amazing jumping point from the second aliens alien film Aliens that they just Disregarded and literally threw in the trash and instead let's just rehash the alien film but with a bunch of bald prisoners. That will be interesting, won't it? No, it won't. <laughs> and so, um, I mean, the ending was kind of emotional. I will grant you that. And I did like that uh, dude. What's his name? The guy who played in that sitcom, Rock. Like, he was good in this film. Um, so it wasn't absolutely terrible, but no, it's, it is a t it is a very bad film, and it's, they're killing off Newton Hicks in between films. Absolutely unforgivable. It was the worst decision ever made in any of these franchises. And um, I remember Charles Dance once giving a, a interview kind of recently where he said that he thought Alien Three was better than Aliens, and I you know I can appreciate the uh, loyalty. To a film that he was in, and he probably like, uh, you know, appreciates the time he spent making that film, and and would look back on it with that kind of reverence. But uh, he could not possibly be more objectively wrong, and it in fact was one of the most ridiculous statements I've ever heard. Anyway, <laughs> so now we'll get to the good. Um, starting at the bottom of the good, um, which is my number eight. Um, Prometheus. Yeah, I mean, this movie's okay. <laughs> um, it's... Here's the thing. And talking about unforgivable, I will never forgive Ridley Scott for selfishly keeping a hold of the Alien franchise and not letting others do it. Because as you will soon find out, I am not the biggest fan of the first Alien film. And overall, I actually am not a fan of Ridley Scott. Um, even films that are very popular like Gladiator and whatnot, um, I don't 
I hate Gladiators, piece of shit. Anyway, and I just don't, I'm not a fan of Ridley Scott, and I'm not a fan of the first Alien film, and I'm more of a fan of Aliens, and so I think that he should have handed the franchise over. In fact, after Prometheus came out, there was, what's his name, Neil Blomkamp or something, who did um, District 9. There was talk that he was in talks to do a, a film, an alien film that took place after Aliens and featured um, Ripley and Hicks and it would disregard Alien 3 and be the true sequel to Aliens. And I was like salivating at the mouth. Like there's nothing I wanted more. I was like, oh my god, I want this film so fucking bad. I don't care if it doesn't live up to the hype. I just, this is what we needed. This is what we deserved after Aliens instead of that piece of shit Alien 3. And it didn't happen because fucking Ridley Scott put his greasy ass hands on the Alien franchise and held it so tightly and said, no, you're not allowed to do it. Only my films can exist. Fuck you. Your films are subpar, at best, mediocre, <laughs> and what we could have gotten a true Aliens sequel. I will never forgive you for that, ever. But anyway, Prometheus itself... It was, it was convoluted. It was written by Damon Lindelof. And it proves that he does a much better job at writing TV shows than he does movies. Uh, <laughs> and that his style of having weird stuff which is kind of mysterious and not really answered or not understandable does not work for a fucking Aliens film. It was an absolutely wrong tone. And so it just comes off as majorly pretentious, which is always the backside of even Damon Lindelof's good work. Some of it can come off as pretentious, so that is a side effect. And so for this work, it was just, just pretentious. Nothing else. Um, but again, it's in the good category, so I don't totally hate it. I don't think it's as bad as the films I just talked about, although they have that scene where the alien snake is going up going... <laughs> And the guy's like, oh, that's so cute. Let me pet it. And the guy was seen to be, shown to be a coward in an earlier scene. Why is he fucking petting an alien snake? <laughs> God damn it. Um, but, and of course, why don't you run, like, sideways instead of running straight from the ship that's rolling towards you? <laughs> like, that's worse than the Rickon stock, uh, not freaking zigzagging. But anyway, other than that... I think the actors do a good job. The characters are written pretty well. Um, I do like to have some scary moments such as the, you know, C-section scene where they take the alien out of the womb. Like, that was truly terrifying. And it was somewhat interesting, I guess. But I'm starting to reconsider me putting this in a good category. It's more of just okay. But anyway, <laughs> we'll get to my number seven, which is Alien Covenant. The sequel to Prometheus, and I, I think I like this better, this movie slightly better than um, Prometheus, just because of the alien. It has the alien. <laughs> it doesn't have that weird progenitor bullshit, blah blah. blah. And it kind of fails as a sequel to Prometheus too, because it just the you have to watch webisodes to find out what happens to the characters in Prometheus, which is bullshit. But anyway, <laughs> it does, does show you. The, the David character, and it was so fucking obvious that he was, like, killed that other android and took his place, but all the idiots didn't figure it out. Again, he the android takes uh, David, was it? He takes him, the captain down to the to the freaking uh, thing with all the freaking alien eggs, and one of them opens up, and then David's like, go ahead and look, and so the guy, like, puts his face, again, that's just as bad as the fucking alien. It's like, why are you gonna put your face... God damn it, I don't care. You don't know what it is. Of course he doesn't know what it is, but who cares? You're not going to stick your face in this weird, disgusting-looking alien egg thingy. You're just not. <laughs> but anyway, um, and there's a lot of other questionable decisions, but the scene at the end where they had the protagonist face off against an alien that was on the ship, and she, she like climbed out of the ship when it was like still flying through the atmosphere of the planet was fucking awesome. I remember getting chills 
uh, just by watching that scene. And there's some other like interesting, exciting scenes in this film as well. So I will give it a bump just for that. But it is maybe not quite as pretentious as Prometheus, but almost. I just don't like Ridley Scott. Anyway, <laughs> next we'll get to my number six, which is Predators. Um, this I was surprised to learn a couple people I talked to really, really liked this film because I thought it's okay at best. Like, it's interesting. It seems like this film is made for people who like the seeing interesting kills, kills from the Predator, like seeing, like, the design of different Predators and the kind of weapons they use and how they choose to kill people, which has never been my attachment to the franchise. I, I do grant you that it's been some people's are really into that sort of thing. Maybe horror buffs are more into that kind of thing than I am, which... Uh, I don't like horror movies, <laughs> if you're not aware, even though this is kind of a horror action. Both of them are horror action franchises, but um, I guess I like the action part of it more than the horror part. But anyway, um, yeah, so this film, it had some, fl- some interesting characters, but the thing is, is that it didn't really have a plot. It didn't really go anywhere. It was just people running away from predators on a planet, which is kind of interesting, and they're trying to survive, and they're getting picked off one by one, and then you get to the end of the film, and you have the two survivors, and you see a bunch of other, like, humans landing on the planet, so the predators are just going to start the process all over again, and so it has, and that seemed like a kind of an Outer Limits, Twilight Zone type, dun-dun-dun, ironic ending, which... I guess it's ironic, but it doesn't, it make it renders the whole purpose and the whole plot of the film moot. It's like, what's the point? Why did I waste my time watching these characters try to survive when they're just going to have to be stuck on the planet some more and go through the same shit all over again? I don't get it. It's like, it's a very pointless film. And, uh, as I said, it's just, and you kind of lose some of the suspense, too. Like, how you can, how do you feel? And plus, having Topher Grace be like a serial killer that tries to kill the protagonist, that was kind of cheesy. <laughs> I'll be honest. But again, I remind you, it's in a good category because it was still a decent movie. Um, it was, you know, still exciting. To, the chase scenes were kind of exciting and done well, and the characters are well fleshed out, and the acting was done pretty well. And you do get excited with it. It's just I wish that uh, it actually meant something. Anyway, uh, we'll get to my number five, which is Alien. And again, I know everyone, their mother's going to disagree with me having this low. And they're definitely going to disagree with some of the movies I have higher than this. But... As I said, I've never been a fan of Ridley Scott. In fact, I would say that Alien is my favorite Ridley Scott film. And I still think it's not that great. (laughs) Um, And it's a decent enough horror film. And I suppose for the time it was made, it was seen as really groundbreaking and uh, original. But the problem is I didn't... Well, I was alive. I was like, what, three months old (laughs) when this movie came out? So I was technically alive. But by the time I saw it, um, I had already seen all the copycats that did the exact same thing a billion times before, so it didn't seem like something new to me. Um, So it's hard for me to judge it as uh, this groundbreaking film when I had already seen everything that came out. Now, I can't hold that against the film because it's not responsible for what comes out after trying to emulate it. Even in his own right, like, again, I'm not a fan of horror, and it seems like the typical horror um, format, where it's, you know, a monster going around killing off people one by one until the final survivor manages to fight off or kill the monster. And uh, that's the basic premise. Now, there's a lot of nuance in that. And you could say, oh, that's what all Alien and Predator movies are like, but it's not. It It isn't, which I'll get to with my definitely get to with my top three but anyway um yeah and and so you have some nuance in that which is why it makes it all the way up to my number five out of 13 which is a good rating um because yes the scary moments with the the concept of the aliens with the eggs and the face hunters and plant and the alien chest bursters 
all was invented for this film and there's it, it is very creative very inventive the design of the alien is cool it was a scary the chest bursting scene was a groundbreaking scene and uh just in film history and it was uh, you know very effectively creepy and scary and the fact that they had space truckers as the main protagonist which made them a bit more relatable uh to the common people and uh ripley um was a good character although explored better in the next film but still a good character and i remember one um this meme i saw on facebook which i always loved where um this guy was saying oh i showed the film alien uh to my wife and she loved it she said alien is about a smart woman where no man would listen to her and all the men die uh, everyone dies except for the smart woman and her cat <laughs> five stars <laughs> but yeah so i just don't think there's that much to this film i don't think it's the masterpiece other people hold it up that is just my personal opinion as i said I, ridney scott is an objectively good director he's a great director he's just not my taste anyway um we'll get to number four which is predator the Arnold Schwarzenegger classic. So as I mentioned, I watched this film recently and I realized it was not as good as I remember. Uh, that's not, I mean, it's number four on my list, <laughs> so it's still high. But I know some people are going to disagree with the other movies I put higher than this, two of them. But, um, but still, it's, um... Yeah, it wasn't quite as good as I remember. It drags a bit in the first half. It's just a bunch of, like, macho men being... And it's very of its time of the 80s. And then this is what I was like. I used to like wrestling and stuff. And that's why I went to see this in the theater. <laughs> Even though I was, like, what, eight years old? Too young to be seeing this in the theater. But I did anyway. Because Jesse the Body Ventura was in it. Um, but it has that, like, whole tough guy masculine just dripping with testosterone 80s arnie action film type feel to it for the first half and i was just like yeah yeah i'm not that's not really my thing i'm not really into that kind of thing um but i will admit it does get a bit, bit, uh, bit better a lot better in the second half um, when the predator actually starts hunting them down, like some people might say, oh, it's a mystery, and it's uh, you know the, when the predator starts killing people off, and they don't know what it is, and it's mysterious, and, and it's a thriller, it's suspenseful. I I didn't really find it that, to be honest. But as I said, I think it gets a lot better in the second half when Arnie squares off against the predator, uh, and and does get exciting. You have classic lines like get to the get to the chopper and stuff like that. Uh, and so yeah, Arnold like spreading himself in mud and going <laughs> like it's one of the classic Arnie films I will say, but I don't think it's as great. Like a lot of people would hold this up. Uh was one of the classic sci fi action films of all time and I don't good still good i still love it but anyway so now we'll get into the awesome the awesome with my top three <laughs> starting with my number three predator two now this right there i know is going to turn a lot of heads i have predator two higher than predator I actually did a video on my channel i think seven eight years ago something like that were um it was a part of a series called breaking conventions where i just gave a bunch of unpopular opinions and in that video my unpopular opinion was predator 2 is better than predator and i went through like beat by beat why i thought predator 2 was better than predator now it is a matter of taste 100 percent I, I will say that outright because as I said, the Predator, or not the Predator, that's a lot of shit. Predator, <laughs> the first one, has uh, that Arnie testosterone big muscle man action. If you're into that sort of thing, you're going to like it better than Predator 2. But I am not into that sort of thing. And Predator 2 is more satirical like i've just watched as i said i just watched a review on this and they were comparing it to like robocop and the type of sat satire that they were doing 
in that film, and that's true. In fact, they said that it borderlined like a Naked Gun style parody, like it was that close from being a straight out parody, and I will agree with that, but I don't think it crosses that border. So you also have to be in for that kind of style as well, which, and also a major, major factor that I will bring up is that I, this film more than any others on the list, as the one I used to grow up with. I used to watch, I remember seeing it in the theaters when it first came out, I think I was 11. <laughs> At least it was better than 8, but anyway. Um, and then I had it on VHS when it first came out, and I owned it, and I used to watch it repeatedly over and over again. It was one of my favorite films. I loved it. And so I have this this uh, nostalgia, nostalgic attachment to this film. Um, there's just a lot of things I think this this film is more interesting to me. Like the the so it said it was came out. It was made in 1989. It came out in 1990, and it was set in 1997, like seven years after it came out, and um, it depicted this. L Los Angeles is a complete and total war zone that the gangs had like pretty much completely taken over and everyone was carrying guns everywhere and it was just uh, a guerrilla nightmare it's just like a dystopian nightmare almost and they only said it seven years in the future and uh, it's funny because LA was facing a lot of gang problems and gang violence in uh, 89 and 90 but the ironic thing is it actually got better by the time you got to 97 not worse uh the gang violence kind of wasn't as bad in the late 90s as it was in the late 80s so <laughs> their prediction was wrong they were predicting it would get much much worse but it has that sort of chaotic feel to it and the other thing about it that i love again kind of as a almost comedic sort of way that i just get a kick out of is how they play off of all of the 80s, um, you know, cop movie, detective, badass detective movie stereotype, and they ramp it up to 11. Like, Danny Glover's character is, like, one of the most stereotypical uh, cop movie um stars you know characters out there is like who goes to his boss like oh fuck you i'm a rogue i do what i want <laughs> and um they crank that up like so high to make it utterly ridiculous and i'm sorry i'm sorry i love it <laughs> i just love it but the other thing is i think that the fight scenes the action sequences with the predator are actually much better in this film than they are in the first film. I'm sorry, but that's what, that was one of my major points. Uh, I'm more interested in the characters is another point. Like the Bill Paxton cowboy cop or whatever. And that other, you know, the other character. I think the characters are more fleshed out and interesting than just a bunch of muscle heads in, in the jungle. So that's, that was another major benefit for me. Um, but yeah, the action sequences are better. Um, particularly the subway scene I think is one of the most terrifying thrilling sequences like in any film ever I just want to go back and watch that scene where the predator is and it, again this plays into the satire thing where everyone on the subway had a gun which is why the predator was there because you know he he only attacks people with weapons and um, so he goes in the subway and just starts fucking killing everyone and the lights are like flashing like strobe lighting it is an amazing sequence I think one of the most terrifying sequences in, in film history um, and then the ending sequence with Danny Glover is chasing the predator through like all these buildings and he's climbing off buildings and they're crashing through apartment walls and shit uh, was amazing that was great as well and the main thing is I remember especially when I first saw this movie being completely awed when he went onto the predator ship and like we saw an alien skull in the wall, which I thought was going to be leading to something great, not two pieces of shit. But well, well, there were some great books and comic books out of it, at least. But anyway, actually, I think the comic book came out first, and that alien on the wall was a homage to the comic book. But anyway, um, when he killed the predator, but then a whole bunch of other predators like pop out, and he's like. 
all right, who's next? <laughs> like that was, he was like bloody and about to fall apart and about to faint just from fighting one predator and then like 12 of them surround him. He's like, all right, who's next? <laughs> It was funny, but then they like show him respect. They're like, "Nah, you you earned it. You're you're a good warrior." And it's really so to me. This is why I, another huge reason why I like it better than the first film because it speaks to the predator culture and what the what they're like and how they respect. You know, it makes them feel like a fleshed out you know culture, a fleshed out race rather than just. An alien that goes around killing people and I really appreciated that um, and that they respected him for being able to kill one of their own and so gives him a, a this gun which again was a, such a um, classic sort of hint that spawn comic books and actually plays in to a future Predator movie um, and so yeah and so I just love that ending so much so much so this is always one of my favorite films so next we'll get into my number two another very controversial decision i'm sure prey yes this is my number two out of both franchises uh, i know this is a very recent film so i kind of have recency bias if that even exists i really think most people actually have bias against recent things most people do but anyway, um, I just love this film, and I think it is particularly better than the first two Predator films because it's not cheesy. Like, even the first Predator film, like, I was comparing it to, because they do reference it, like, at the several times, but at the end of Prey, where she sets a trap for the Predator, and she wants the Predator to walk into the trap, and she's like, come on, do it, come on, do it. And that was, of course, a big callback to the first Predator. But when I went back, because that was like such an intense scene and like suspenseful scene. But when I went back and saw the Arnie film, he was like, come on, do it. I'm here. Kill me. Come on, do it now. <laughs> it's just so cheesy. And I like, and it feels like much more like weighty, much more intense and in pray. But more than that, the reason why I love this film, first of all, having it set and um north america um i wouldn't say before they colonized it but before it was completely colonized by europeans because there are some europeans that we do see in this film um but just basing it on a native american and a native american tribe and making them the protagonist and following their culture was a very interesting take on the Predator franchise. It was exactly what they needed to do other than the Predator, which is like, let's make all these different kinds of Predators and let's make this a monster Predator or whatever. No, <laughs> you don't need to do that kind of bullshit. Or let's have bigger explosions. It's like making it more grounded, making it more character-based. And the characters that they made up in this film were just so flushed out so interesting like i think it was so well written well acted like uh the main protagonist and her story of trying to prove herself and here's the thing before this film came out there was a lot of people and they probably still exist and had the same complaints were complaining that oh this is fucking ridiculous this is hollywood woke nonsense and anyone who says the word woke should be discarded but anyway <laughs> hollywood woke nonsense by having a, a tiny little girl face off a predator there's no way that she could face off against a predator but that's kind of the point of the film it's kind of the point that she's not sure of herself she's not a badass uh she's not sure of her abilities and uh she's very much very very much the underdog against the predator more so than a big muscle man like arnie or even a seasoned cop like danny glover so that actually makes it more interesting, not less. And, it's, and of course, it's not woke bullshit because that's the whole thing. Argument's stupid, but but it's kind of it's the whole point is that she's finding herself and she's finding the courage that she didn't have before and proving herself. Is she? I haven't heard anyone say this, but if they did, they'd be totally objectively wrong. Is that she's not at all Mary Sue character, which is what I think these people were implying. Um, the fact she comes off as 
very vulnerable makes it that much more intense and the whole story with her brother like spoilers but when her brother died it was heartbreaking like it was much more heartbreaking than any of the characters in any of these other films i mentioned previously dying um and so this is the most more emotionally impactful and it's my second favorite it is my second favorite of these films. I don't care if people are outraged by that or disagree with that, but it is. Anyway, so we'll now get to my number one favorite film of the Alien and the Predator franchises, and was there ever any doubt, it's Aliens, of course. Uh, James Cameron's masterpiece. Um, you know where I sit on the argument Alien versus Aliens. Most people can't really decide I can decide. For me, it's an easy pick. But that's just my personal preference. I mean, some people, I have heard some people who like Alien better saying, oh, but Aliens isn't even like a true horror film. It's more of an action film. I'm like, bingo. <laughs> that's why I like it better. Um, but I suppose, like, the horror fan would like it that way. So, as I said, it's a matter of opinion. Um, but although. I disagree with those saying it's not a horror film because it is a horror film. It's just also an action film. It's also sci-fi. It's horror, action, sci-fi. It's all three. Because there are some moments you can't tell me are not horror moments. And in fact, it has some of the best horror moments I've seen in any franchise, any film ever. In fact, when I did my top ten horror films, this was my number one. Even though, and I pointed out that people were gonna disagree and say it's not really a horror film, but. I don't really like true horror films. <laughs> I mostly like like the thrillers and the stuff that's like slightly horror. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, there there are definitely some scary ass moments. Like you telling me that moment when they're doing that thing with the beeper that makes the noise uh, that detects movement. It's going boop, 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 and he's saying they're in the room, man. They're three meters away, and they're like, "There's no way they're in." that close up thing must be broken but then Hicks looks up to the ceiling and everyone's like oh fuck and then he climbs up in the ceiling turns around and there's a huge fucking horde of aliens crawling off the vents he's like ah! starts freaking out that is one probably the most terrifying moment in film history I don't care what anyone says that was so fucking intense and basically just from that point to the end of the film was just non-stop like heart palpitations just thrilling like it's super suspense some of the most suspenseful moments and again a lot of this has to do with the great character building that they did and it's funny because here you have a group of marines kind of similar to predator i can't i don't remember what part of the armed forces they were in maybe it was i can't remember but it, maybe they, they weren't navy seals were they i don't know but i don't care <laughs> the point is they have a group of military men but they're much more interesting much more fleshed out than in predator um and yeah you have the different dynamics you have an android that's good which is such a interesting way to take it and i think the way the reason why this I would probably argue it's the best sequel of all time up there with um, Empire Strikes Back and The Wrath of Khan. Um, is that because it doesn't try to do what the first film did. Alien 3. <coughs> it doesn't try to do what the first film did. Instead, takes it in a totally different direction and makes it like unique but great. Like... I was attended a lecture once that like went through this film step by step and how this is one of the best written films ever made and I completely agreed with everything. Well, not everything. There's one thing the lecturer said that I completely, utterly and totally disagreed with and will always disagree with is that he said the theatrical version was better than the special edition, edition which is objectively wrong <laughs> i'm sorry like they were saying oh but the the theatrical version has better pacing it's more intense and i was like that is nothing compared to the scenes that you're missing like it misses the one scene which i think is the most important scene in the entire film and i cannot believe they cut it out where ripley when she first comes back to earth and it's been well not earth but the station whatever but it's been humanity say it that way but it's been 57 years and she finds out that her daughter had grown old and then passed away and that's really informed her character going forward and they say oh you can still get the motherly instincts for newt 
even without that scene. Sure, you can, but it means a hell of a lot more with that scene. There's a lot more subtext in it with that scene. So, And also you have the scene where uh, Newt... Um, they show us Newt in the colony before the aliens take over, and they show her and her father go out, and her father get the face hugger in. Like that to me is also one of the most important scenes of the film. I've heard again, I've heard different people saying, "Oh, it takes away from when they first find Newt and they first find the colony. You don't know what's going on." But I don't. I, I really don't agree. I think it adds a lot more because you saw this colony. And you saw this girl as normal people, as normal things, and then the next time you're there, it's just everything's falling apart, and she's like mud covered and scared for her life. And the contrast between those two portrayals, I think, adds a lot. It adds a lot to the film. And so, yeah, I think anyone who says theatrical version is better is objectively wrong. Not my opinion, it's an objective fact. But anyway. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, I, I just this is one of my favorite films of all time. I just think the structure is beautiful, the music is beautiful, having introducing the alien queen, and just the way that everything is structured, and having that Ripley go back for Newt, um, like going in the heart of the alien hive to get her is like one of the most like. And suspenseful best action sequences of all time. It's just an amazing film. Uh, one of the best films ever made. <laughs> Aliens is my number one. So, that is it for my ranking all the Alien Predator films. Thank you so much for watching this impromptu video, <laughs> which I wasted my time doing, but I'm ah, not a waste of time. It's just should be reviewing Star Trek. But anyway, I'm going to get back to that so you can check out my channel as I continue to cover Next Generation. I'm at uh, Season 4 at the moment, also covering new episodes of Star Trek Discovery. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.